Welcome to Investor's Hangout, brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Today's episode is a senior citizen special. A lot has happened, and uh, particularly in the budget 2018, provisions have been made to take care of two important aspects. One, related to the health of the senior citizens, and two, about the income. Uh, the dependable income that they can earn. What are these provisions? We will discuss with the CEO of Value Research, Dhirendra Kumar. Dhirendra, welcome. Thank you. My name is Rajesh Klaik and my first question to Dhirendra is on the four provisions uh, which Budget 2018 has made for senior citizens. What uh, else would you like to just... Yeah, do? one key thing was that, you know, 50,000 rupees interest exemption. Okay. The other is, you know, uh, Last year, uh, the, the, a new scheme was introduced, which was Pradhan Mantri Vya Vandana Yojana, which yields about 8.3%. That limit, you know, the amount of money that you could invest there has been increased to 15 lakh rupees okay. from erstwhile 7.5 lakh rupees. So that, that's also useful that, you know, investors in this age bracket are risk averse. And uh, this is widely available. It's almost like senior citizen saving scheme. Uh, and then the exemption limit on health insurance plan. Now you can actually pay a premium of 50,000 rupees per annum and uh, that will also be a deductible expense for them. And then one, one thing useful that has come in this budget is that if you spend 1 lakh rupees on any critical illness, that will also be an exempt expenditure. Okay. So, that, you know, deduction limit, mm. um, uh, deductible expense for senior citizens. So, these are, you know, all four of them combined together. They are useful. They will reduce the pain a little bit. Uh, but uh, the real risk which, you know, most senior citizens face today, the risk of outliving their savings, uh, that they will have to take care of themselves. You know, they have to configure themselves about it. These things will reduce their, you know, pain or difficulty a little bit, not substantially. But this is a scary thought, you know, outliving your savings. Yes. So, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a while, but before that, just just delve deeper into yes. these two, uh, four provisions that we you just mentioned. One, with two related to income and two <coughs> related to health. Yeah. Okay, uh, how is it, and you did mention SCSS, the Senior Citizen Savings Scheme. How is the uh, PMVVY different from CSSS? Uh, one is that, you know, one is offered by Government of India. The Senior Citizen Savings Scheme is run by National Savings Organization. Hmm. Uh, both are reasonably safe because, you know, they carry the sovereign, ga not, you know, LIC, the, the, hmm. one, the other scheme is operated by LIC. Okay. But that apart, you know, there is a tacit understanding that, you know, it's, it is done at the behest hmm. of Government of India and Life Insurance Corporation is government owned. And it's you know providing this uh, return. Uh, uh, there is there isn't much difference in the level of riskiness or in amount of return. Senior citizen savings mm -hmm. scheme that actually provides you you know uh, if you have thirty lakh rupees to invest, if you can invest fifteen lakh rupees in both of them, mm -hmm. uh, might as well because this is the safest that you can get in India. They are both yielding eight point three percent, and if you just have to choose one, I would go with you know senior citizen savings scheme because it turns out to be more liquid. You can take your money out in case of emergency okay. uh, by paying a penalty, uh, and it's also widely available. For that, you go to LIC, and for this, you go to any bank, any nationalized bank, or in so most other banks, you know, so convenience as well. Okay. Otherwise, you know, in terms of safety and return. There isn't much difference because you know investors tend to expect uh, absolute safety here, guaranteed return. Uh, okay. So that goes without saying. And what about uh, the FD? What's your take on the fifty thousand increase in the fixed deposits? Uh, it's a small privilege. It's a small benefit. Uh, it is a benefit, uh, but it's not a substantial thing because you know when I look at fifty thousand rupees interest income on a deposit. Uh, that will be about 6 lakh rupees deposit which will yield this much return. And the amount of deposit that you need to make uh, to earn, you know, to, to earn interest, to sustain yourself, 
I would say that you know in a city like Delhi, if you have a house and if you are if you are healthy and you are old. And then you need at least you know anywhere between 30 to 50 thousand rupees for basic sustenance mm. that will be 6 lakh rupees income a 6 lakh rupee income will require you know a much larger deposit and uh, if that will be taxable and you know all this money which from which you are deriving the income this has been accumulated after paying taxes for a lifetime so i think you know senior citizens should be looked upon a little differently i think you know the uh, government should look at them little liberally maybe they at some point they will look at it right now they are starved of you know uh, they, they they are looking for avenues to raise resources but i feel that you know senior citizen of this kind who is who is actually fending for himself because he is not a government employee you know when we look at the government employees who are in the their retirement phase they are being completely taken care of they are being completely taken the care pension. of by a pension a mm. pension which is inflation adjusted mm. which gets revised with the pace you know uh, which gets revised with you know all the pay commissions most state government and central government you know the central government health scheme if you look at cghs it is able to you know 30000 rupees lifetime premium and you are being taken care of for, for a lifetime uh, for all the critical illness everything uh, without any upside so i think you know private citizens who take care of themselves they have saved for for all their life mm. and uh, they have paid taxes mm. they need to be you know they need to be looked at little liberally and people on the margin maybe you know a threshold beyond 20 lakh 30 lakh 40 lakh rupees of you know interest income they should be uh, they should be taxed but you know looking at people who are making you know 5 lakh 6 lakh rupees because mm. there is another problem with this generation of senior citizens uh, they are not used to assuming risk in all their life while they were saving and investing uh, their avenue was ppf which was fixed income their avenue was their own provident fund their avenue was you know fixed deposit market was not accessible if market became accessible it was actually not a very safe place to invest most people burn their fingers never to come back again mm. market was not democratized in a manner it is it is happening today Correct. so they did they never had the experience of you know optimizing their return uh, underst understanding the risk the level of education uh, was also not there so i think you know they need to be looked at differently and uh, but i you know you really need to look take care of yourself you need to plan mm -hmm. things yourself a um, little more methodically it's not too late if you have the capital you know try and optimize your return try and optimize your return in a tax efficient manner it can well be done uh, and uh, because I, you know, the way these, these, these concessions are getting extended as a privilege, I think it should have been my rightful. Okay. So that was the income aspect of it. What about the provisions of health? Health, I like the whole thing that up to 50,000 rupees because, you know, uh, things are getting institutionalized and 50,000 rupees premium for health insurance for a couple in old age uh, should be adequate for, you know, medical emergencies. Okay. But that, you know, health insurance of that kind can only take care of, you know, hospitalization mm -hmm. expense. Today, we come across a situation where, you know, you don't get admitted in a hospital, but you will still have, you know, some uh, some need of ongoing spend on your health. So uh, th that it doesn't take care of that, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, it's better than not having one. And the critical illness thing, I think, you know, it is good increasing the limit uh, you know deductible expense on critical illness up to one lakh i would expect that you know this should be far more liberalized because so we are talking one, lakh now? Uh, one what is one lakh mm -hmm. and then you know critical illness you don't start with you know uh, with a budget you just get into a mire of expenditure mm -hmm. and uh, that too, I think, you know, it's a failure of the our government to provide adequate health care in many states in a form which is, you know, which is near, which is paid for by the taxpayers mm. too. Okay, uh, so <coughs> these are the two uh, categories, in fact, the four provisions that we talked about. Now, the next is, my question is very critical. And uh, for I can uh, change the direction of, I cannot change the direction of the wind, but I can surely adjust my sails to always um, reach my destination. So, related to this is a question, what should be the investment strategy for senior citizens now? Uh, they have to embrace risk and embrace risk carefully in a fairly measured way. Uh, embrace risk doesn't mean that, you know, you become reckless. Uh, first and foremost, invest a little bit 
uh, to an extent in these uh, PMVVY or you know senior citizen savings mm -hmm. scheme uh, to the extent that you need the essential support of guaranteed fixed income it entirely depends you know everybody needs a different plan depending on his scale uh, and the scale could be different there it could be a the if you are getting pension from the government maybe you don't need income but for all other people if you have in if you have any other income avenue you might have a house of from which you are deriving a rent that could be a that is another avenue mm. think carefully about it and in fact the rental income is not a bad avenue because you know mostly it turns out to be a inflation adjusted income as you know um, with rising costs you are able to you know even though the worth of the property might be anything but mm. your whatever rental income you get used to that gets adjusted with inflation rising prices and uh, uh, so despite lower yield it can still be going up uh, that part uh, you should look at you know your you should carefully budget how much you need every month essentially and uh, put as much money in that senior citizen saving scheme or uh, add the rental income or any other avenue of income that you okay. regular income that mm. you have rest of the money mm. all the money which you are from which you do not need to derive that mm. uh, regular income that needs to be invest invested in some kind of asset allocation okay. uh, which is combined which is coupled with equity uh, if that is a large amount and uh, you are unlikely to need that maybe a balance fund or maybe a equity income fund or maybe a growth option of a mip why i am saying this because you know these are a uh, dynamic allocate uh, uh, you know they are frozen allocation a balance fund is almost like two third equity one third fixed income uh, if you are early in your retirement mm -hmm. uh, uh, equity income is one third equity and two third fixed income right. or MIP is just 10 15 percent equity and rest is fixed income so they are different and you don't have to manage it the fund manager will take care of it when equity goes up he will rebalance so there won't be any tax implication you run the possibility of you know beating inflation at at least matching inflation because the real risk is that if you put all your money in the fixed income avenue from which you derive the income and consume it then your capital remains constant when your capital remains constant the need for inflation adjusted income over time uh, that will not be fulfilled so when you have some other ad additional capital which is growing at a higher rate you are not withdrawing from that whatever that amount be so you need to really work on this mm -hmm. plan derive your income from something guaranteed rest of the money invest which is able to grow with with time linked to the inflation and if you are able to match inflation or beat inflation you will have enough capital to support a rising income is you will need your need for higher income if that has to be derived from that frozen capital your capital will be eaten in your lifetime okay so what percentage should that be there isn't a thumb rule and it requires uh, uh, you know careful planning for each individual because it is entirely a function of uh, your need for income and how much capital you have which varies from every person for, for from per person to person but I think you know uh, if I have to really work on a calibrated plan and if you are really you know short on capital I would say that a conservative plan will be that don't even go for that fixed income avenue put your money in a calibrated way in a, in a period of six months to three years depending on your scale put your money in a frozen allocation something like a MIP or equity income fund which is a conservative allocation so 25% of that no all of it all of it all of it and because only 25% of that money will be in equity but spread it over a period of time so that you don't you know you eliminate the risk of catching a market high and then have a withdrawal plan of just f anywhere between 4 to 5% 4 to 5% withdrawal plan from such a fund from such an investment will ensure that uh, you will have uh, y you, your capital will be protected it will be able to protect mm. its worth okay. not only it will protect its worth because of the rising worth of your capital you will be able to increase your income over time so two years from now you can give yourself an increment of 10 percent uh, and that four becomes say, yeah, no four remains four but ah. your capital becomes larger so ah, okay. so the four of a larger amount will actually become okay. more okay. so in that sense you know if your mm. capital goes up by 10 percent so your income from that four, uh, from that increased capital will be higher mm. so if you had a, a lack of rupees mm. of capital and you are earning 4000 rupee and that one lakh rupee becomes 
two lakh rupees, then that that four lakh rupees, uh, four thousand rupee will actually become eight thousand rupees. So because the need for increasing your capital base, that will be met. And if you are actually doing a four to five percent withdrawal rate, you will eliminate the possibility of consuming too much of your capital. Mm -hmm. And over time, uh, when as and when it increases, as uh, as and when your capital grows, then you know uh, <coughs> withdraw. You know. Then your income rises, and so to begin with, be conservative with with your withdrawal. You will have to assume mm. this risk because all other fixed income avenue will not help you beat inflation or protect the worth of your capital. And how do they circumvent through the LTCG? Oh, LTCG. You know this plan is also very LTCG uh, compliant or efficient. Okay. It will be able to because uh, the whole idea is that you know when you make a deposit. and when you get this interest income it is recognized as your income and it is taxed and now the finance minister has said said that you know up to 50000 rupees i won't tax you okay. uh in this case what happens is you are actually taking your capital out the first okay. in first out mm -hmm. principle is happen, uh, is being implemented so initially you don't have much of a gain or your gain is on the overall investment but the it will actually in that from a taxation point of view it will look like you are actually taking your money back and which is true Ac accounting wise mm. so you your tax liability will be very minimal and only over a period of time when you have larger gains then you know that tax will get triggered but after 2 3 years you will have the privilege of being indexed uh, getting a lower lower tax taxation rate and anyway long term capital gains is 10% it is far lower than the marginal tax rate because it could be 20% 30% so uh, even in the most crudest form taxation of capital gains is concessional than income uh, so that itself is good and then by following this withdrawal plan you will be able to save the save on taxes substantially in initial years it could be virtually nothing